Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the books and resources we're using for our physics main lesson block. This is going to be a subunit on acoustics. So I have a couple of resources here that are just for our acoustics main lessons, but I also have some resources that we're using for all of our physics main lessons. So I want to briefly show you these. They're going to show up in each of our different sub main lesson blocks during our physics unit. So I'm going to share them with you right now. We have two Waldorf uh, main lesson books. These are by Live Education. There's one for grade six, which is light or he heat, light, and sound, introduction to physics. And this is going to go through a basic introduction to three areas of physics. So we have thermodynamics, we have light, and we have acoustics. And these lessons are going to be really simple. A lot of the things that you do in this main lesson book or for this main lesson block are going to be with materials that you probably already have around your house in order to create these projects. So it's a really simple, gentle introduction to physics. The next one, this is going to be for seventh grade. This is going to go into electricity, magnetism, mechanics, acoustics, and optics. So the lessons in optics and acoustics are going to be a little bit more involved for this second year. And there's also going to be an introduction of electricity and mechanics. We're also using Physics the Waldorf Way for grade 6, 7, and 8. And presently, we've only really gone into grade 6. And so far, the projects have been incredible. They're so amazing because they're really simply done, but you learn a lot in the process just through the demonstration itself. Now, some of these things we've probably already done or we already know as adults, but doing the demonstration really allows you to experience it in a different way and have that aha moment. And then there are things that maybe we knew but we never experienced before. And being able to do these projects has been a real joy for me as well as my uh, son who is now 14. We also have Physics the Waldorf Way Grade 7 and this is going to be a similar format to the Grade 6 Physics book. The demonstrations or at least the materials for the demonstrations are really simple and it's just going to go into more depth with the five different areas. And At the beginning of the book you can see how they're divided up. So we have uh, sound for the seventh grade, which you also had for the sixth grade. You have light. You have the study of heat, electricity, mechanics. And what's really great about this book is that it goes into details about how to set up your main lesson, uh, how to set up your several day lesson rhythm because this is Waldorf inspired. So there's a particular way to set up your lessons and also how to set up your demonstrations because it's also quite different than what you might expect from a traditional way to teach these physics demonstrations and lessons. We also have physics the Waldorf way for grade eight and this is going to go into the same five areas. It's just going to be m like deeper and the, the demonstrations I imagine since we haven't done them are probably going to be a little bit more involved. I do have a resource that's going to go for all of our physics lessons and that's the visual dictionary of physics. This is a DKI witness book. This one's a little bit older, but I think that there are newer versions of this. This is just going to be a basic reference primarily for the teacher or the parent to give you some background information on the lessons that you're going to be doing. I know that I definitely need a refresher course on a lot of these things and just having that education for myself makes it that much easier to do these projects and to have an understanding, even if I'm not explaining all of these details to my son and eventually my daughter, who will be doing these lessons as well. So I have a couple of books here and some materials that are going to work just right for our acoustics lessons. But before we dive into these ones, I want to share with you this one because this is also going to work for multiple main lesson blocks, not just ones on physics, but on science in general. And this is Women in Science, 50 Fearless Pioneers Who Changed the World. 
And this goes through several scientists throughout the world who had these discoveries or who made these discoveries, who worked really hard in the field of science. And what's a little bit more impressive is that they did this at a time for many of them when it wasn't accepted in society for women to have a higher education or to work as scientists or to be recognized as scientists or even to get paid as scientists for their discoveries. And so they really had to push and persevere in order to work in that field and to make their discoveries. And and I love this kind of resource to be added to not just our science main lesson blocks, but any of our lessons, just as a reminder and as a lesson and also as role models, both for men and women or for girls and boys. And so this for this book, there are probably going to be maybe, I would say, less than 10 biographies that we can... Uh, dive into and I'm just going to go through and just find any of the ones who were physicists or scientists in in a capacity that could relate to our physics lessons and we'll read these and we'll include them but also it's an opportunity for you to dive in deeper and find a biography specifically on some of these women and of course the men but I I would encourage also looking into some of the female biographies for the scientists. So let me show you the books that we have for this particular main lesson block, and then I'll show you the materials that we're using in order to create some of our demonstrations and experiments. The first book I have is called The Story of the Orchestra. And what I like about this book is that it comes with a CD. So yes, I'm a little bit dated, but it comes with a CD, which has been so helpful for us because as it goes through these different musical instruments and the uh, the composers, it also shares a little clip of their music. And that's been really helpful for us as we go through this book. I am not very strong in music and singing and musical instruments. And so having something like this is really helpful because trying to describe it or trying to play them or trying to just have examples of it that I find on my own, it's very difficult. So this book is going to go through different composers and then it's going to go through different instruments. And this is going to be really helpful for us as we're going through this part of of our demonstrations because we're, our very first lessons in acoustics is going to be about listening for sound and the changes in it. We also have Clang. This is Ernest Cladney's Sound Experiments. So this book is a, a biography, but also explains the musical instruments that this man had, had created and also the Cladney uh, plate, which we, we had tried to source one but it was beyond our budget, but it's a plate where when you have different vibrations or different sounds, then it creates different patterns on it, which I thought was really neat. So you can see some examples here of the sound wave patterns that were created on this plate. And I think that that would be a really cool demonstration to have. I think that you could probably do something similar with, say, a stretched balloon over an opening and then you could have you could put maybe sand or flour and you could create different patterns with sound vibrations so it's an it's an uh an alternative maybe if you can't get one of these although i think that seeing this come to life in front of you is probably super spectacular but uh, we weren't able to source that I have another biography. This one's called Nothing Stops Sophie. And we actually got this one for our math main lesson block. But in this book, it talks about some of the discoveries that Sophie makes. And it has to do all with sound and vibrations and the mathematical calculations that came about with predicting the different vibrations and the different patterns through sound. And so I did, I decided to add it to this particular main lesson block because I think it's uh, wonderful to add these biographies. It really kind of gives you a human uh, connection to the science and it worked just right with our uh, sound and acoustics lessons. The last book I want to share with you is called Pythagoras and the Ratios. And this is a fun book on how different sounds can be produced depending on the size or rather the length of the instrument that you're using. And we have used this book before for some of our other main lessons, but now I'm happy to actually bring in some copper tubes that are of different lengths so that we can actually do this experiment as well, or rather just the demonstration, not really the experiment, but to blow through these and to hear 
the different sounds that are produced based on the size of the cylinders. Now we can do this very simply with cups and putting various levels of water and then running your finger uh, on top of the cup around the rim with it slightly moist and then you can hear the different sounds that are produced if you have like say six different cups with different levels of water. So that's something that you could practically do if you didn't have access to the cylinders. You can also make these, I believe, if you go to the hardware store, these are, this is copper pipes or copper piping. And so you can have this cut down to whatever size you want. But we did order these through a science vendor. There are two science vendors that I have primarily purchased a lot of materials for, for this unit. And it is Ward's Science and Educational Innovations. And so those two different vendors will have a lot of the materials that I'm sharing with you today. So let me put these aside and these books, and let me show you some of the musical instruments that we're using for this main lesson block. So we're going to try to get instruments that are percussion or string or wind instruments, just so that we can get a feel for or how each of these sound. So for our string instrument, we have a lyre, and this is uh, from, gosh, I can't, actually, I can't remember the name of the store that we bought it from. You can find the links to all of the materials that we're using, or at least pictures of them so that you can source them at different vendors. So we wanted something that had, uh, and I think this needs to be tuned, to be honest. We wanted to have a string instrument so that we could listen for those vibrations in a way that's that's different than the sound vibrations you're going to hear in some of these other instruments. So we have this, you could use a guitar and you can actually make your own using guitar string strung up on a piece of wood. You can just nail in uh, some like different lengths or just nail in the same length on a piece of wood, like two nails on equal uh, distance, and then use different guitar strings and string them up and just listen to the different sound. So this is something that we're going to be using to listen to the different sounds and try to identify them. We also have our drum. And this one's from Mercurius. And also from the same brand, we have our recorder and we'll also use this. And something that we've learned recently to add to our uh, math main lesson blocks actually is to listen for the number of sounds. And so in addition to just hearing these different sounds, we also want to listen for how many notes you hear, how many times you hear a percussion instrument hit. And it just gives you a different appreciation for listening for the number of sounds uh, rather than say always counting. And that's something that we like to do in our homeschool is to merge our lessons with some of the other main lesson blocks that we're doing. So while my son is doing a physics main lesson block, my daughter is doing a math main lesson block and this is a great way to merge those two together. We also have our glockenspiel and this one sounds really beautiful. And this one is from Paper Scissors Stone. This is from Waldorf Supplies. We also have our triangle and I've actually left um, the thing that chimes it so I'm just going to use this And we also have one more chiming instrument. And let me share with you how this one sounds. And this one was from Educational Innovations. And there you can really hear the difference that the notes make based on the size of the cylinders. And these ones are solid cylinders, and so we're tapping them. And you, the other ones that we had that were copper were hollow, and so we were blowing through them. We also have some tuning forks for our lessons, and we have a set that has them in different sizes. We also have this large one, and I we, we had them for a while. We do like to chime them. Uh, let's see. That wasn't, that wasn't that great. Let me see if we can do. 
So you can hear that that one is uh, higher than this one here. Let me do one more. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear that very well. Anyway, because all of this is so out of my comfort zone, it's going to be a challenge to use some of these these items. But just for me, just having them, having us interact with them and experience them is going to be at least the first level of understanding our acoustics lessons and then being able to listen for different kinds of musical instruments and and the history of sound and the biographies of the scientists who discovered uh, the sound vibrations and the different pictures that sounds make. That's going to all be very educational for us in our in experiencing these different lessons. I forgot to show you our box of different items that we're using for our physics units. And we also have our own little string telephone that we've made using two tin cans and some string and also just a nail on the end of it. And so we're gonna be using that also for our acoustics lessons so that we can try out uh, our, our string telephone and listen for sound that travels through materials, uh, through vibrations. So we do have a couple of other projects that we've included that we don't really have the materials for to, to share with you right here, just because they're things that you can find around your house, like a spoon or listening uh, to different items and the, the sounds they make underwater, for instance. So there are a lot of those different sound projects that we got from our different main lesson books that just use materials that you probably already have around the house. So I wish I had more to share with you and more details on our projects, but be sure to check out the blog post that accompanies this video because I do have all of our demonstrations on a course page on my website at pepperandpine.com. So if you want to see how that unit is progressing, you can find that information down in the description box below. And if you want to see how our homeschool is progressing on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at pepperandpine.